Okay, folks, pretty much this is a timeline for Earth to be in a sandwich, and the sandwich I'm going to show you is what I'll show you in just a second with the data and actual factual. And this is pretty much where uh, 2012 XE54 is at right now, and then with Tautus behind us, uh, we're not in any dangers. Then it still is DA14 that you are going to be interested in, and then I'll also give you our comet that's going to be coming around. So here we go with some data. And yes, as you can see with my proportional integral derivatives, I could put a rocket on your ass anywhere in the world. Okay, just about anybody can. You just need the computer. Okay, it just helps you with your proportional integral derivatives a little faster. Okay, so basically it's a rough estimate of what the speed and everything on the uh, 2012 XE54 is traveling. Now there's really not too much important on this one, but the thing is it becomes an aircraft uh, controllers kind of like thing of basically being crowded kind of like that uh, how many people that try to backdoor and window my information before I even get it out to you in a, on a uh, video yeah because I've got a brain and I can understand this stuff you can too it's pretty simple stuff so we got this object out there so we'll come back to this in a second since it's kind of jamming up a little bit and I think I've got our object here is this our D that's Tautus okay Tautus is pretty easy explanation is that you see that that's behind us okay and as we flicker through this, we'll see how good your video gets on this. So Tautus is up, up there, and basically what you're seeing is you're not, your eyes are not uh, messing with you. Basically that's Earth there, and then what I'll do is I'll end up using the magnifier, and we'll see how it, the video turns out with the idea, the actual factual. See, you've got Earth there, okay? And also in the last shot when I was showing you that other object. So we're getting a little bit crowded. We're just getting a little bit crowded. Uh, there's massive distances out there in space, but you have to realize that uh, these will just natural objects in space, they don't have an air traffic controller, okay? So, now we'll go ahead and I, whether we, it doesn't really matter what we end up with, it's all the stuff we wanted to discuss. So now we got uh, 2012 XE54, okay? And as you can see, there's definitely a little traffic on my computer so it's not me and it just did slow down now so and as you see that's how scatter works and mirroring works so basically they come in behind your screens and then take a look at what you're looking at so as you can see earth is there with that with that object now if you don't believe me there's earth in there okay you can see it in that shot on that deal it's better off we're not even tick and mess with the players because in the Java well they'll try to speed my computer up real fast and make it really ugly so, keyword try. Firewalls. Anyway, hey, th and by the way, that uh, the guy that knows a bunch of information about backdoor on your computer, he's safe and supposed to be coming back in the United States. I bet he's already here. So anyway, condition seven on this, and you've seen the closeness. And let's go over here to the right, and we ain't gonna worry about what they're looking at on my computer to see what my operationals is going on. They just want to see, okay, what page is he on? Okay, so now there you go. And that's how fresh and they keep an eye on this stuff now. We're basically sandwiched between Tautus, and let's see if I can go back fast enough. I think that this will give us Tautus. See, we're sandwiched between Tautus and the upcoming object. But see, the other object is behind a little bit. Uh, and like I said, the celestial thing has been being behind a little bit also. You see, there's Earth and Tautus. Okay, and then we pop down, and we go to... Uh, that's actually going to be what's next. I don't think of my... What am I into now? It's still here. Okay, there we go. So, we'll get rid of the magnifier so it doesn't screw with the shot. I've noticed how that's been going lately. So, basically, condition 7, you have to remember that. The higher the higher the condition, I think I can bring that up so that I don't even have to say it. Condition code, that should be... Bring up the explanation. But as I'm waiting for that, we'll go up and take a look. I need to lock up, probably. So anyway, we'll save tape time, right from NASA's mouth, 9 being high, okay? So 7 is a little bit to be concerned about, and it just doesn't matter. It just, when it gets, anything gets that close, and the mileage is 137,000 miles, okay? 16,000 miles is, uh, and then I have another object that, uh, I guess I'll bring up the diagram on it, but it basically, in 2029, it's not even going to get as close as DA-14, so I've been telling you about DA14. Let me put this in in there so you realize that. So yes, with 
three three things objects being out around us right now and as you can see this there's earth there with that okay and then no one's really even paying attention at that too much but that's what's got everybody concerned because the scientists are telling well, we got three you know quite close things and then there's a lot of other stuff and it's but the idea that you just it's just a uh, and then we'll put in DA 14 2012 DA 14 to make you guys remember that that's the one you basically absolutely need to be worried about okay and then we pop in here DA 14 we'll put the orbital up and as if that's loading you hopefully should be able to pop down here and just go ahead and give her a close approach data and make you realize and you, it'll compute out and you can even do another compu computation on it no matter what you need to be worried about it because it's 116,800 miles and it's going to be around here on see if you, come, if you take and compute that that's all you okay and it's the earth on the 15th moon on the 16th but at the same time we did honestly have a scientist say the 13th so this one could be ahead in what we've got going on right now with uh, DA uh, and currently that's sitting at that far away so that's close so, so you can see how crowded we are we have a bunch of so there's a bunch of to be concerned about and then uh, I suppose some people start thinking about national security and that's always any military mind or anything like so we back over to XC 54 and I've already given you the close data in time on that okay as this is up and current and they keep they're watching it 24 7 believe me JPL is all over where this thing's at. I'm pretty damn sure. And anyway, we, like I gave you the mileage and everything like that, I already figured it's behind a little bit. So it, that's a good thing, because that means if it's not behind at all, then it's farther out. Okay? So we're safe in the, the closeness of 137,000 miles on this thing is nothing much to worry about. Satellites, no. The satellites are all, and even, this, even the ISS space station is like somewhere between 300 to 400 miles, and I think they even pulled the, uh, with whatever the other debris that's around there, from what I understand, the ISS station is in a lower orbit, and they already tested a while back, and either that or they moved it out of the way, some other material, which they did talk about some material and have them issues and stuff like that. So it seems like almost every time they change altitude, I think that they make a less amount of astronauts on it, or they change the astronauts. So anyway, they can move this the ISS up and down, and I've pretty much proved that to you uh, when we were doing our watches of the eclipse and so forth. So then we go to the actual factual of ISON, the comet that everybody's worried about, which everybody's got, because basically what I'm going to do is blow in on this also. Hopefully this magnifier is working good to, to explain to you guys. Uh, December 10th, 2012, and then basically I'm going to have to hit the player again, and someone decided to take the information away, but, get, but I can just redo it with the J... Uh, D, as you're going to see, I'm going to bring it into uh, there, and then I'll zoom back in on it, because it'll mess up here with uh, trying to do it with the deal. So I'm going to zoom ahead, and as you can see, I don't pull on any... no games on you, and we'll bring it down, and it's going to be November of next year. Okay. Now remember, the most important thing is February 13th through the 16th of, of next year. It's the only time to even be considered. And that's gonna, and once that goes by, it doesn't bother anything. And it's going to be, it should only get as close as, like I say, 100 and, uh, what was it, 116,800 some miles from us. And I do believe the 28th is pretty much it, that it should be, let's, well, we'll know because we'll blow up on it. And, but now it's a variant, right? Like I said, this other one's coming close to see how it's going to be going around the sun. And then it, there, and then we'll play it some more to see how, what we got going on. And maybe I can just hit play. Actually, I'll minus down. And I'll just hit play. And uh, I'll back up one day so you realize. And basically that should be the closest because that's closest it's going to be the sun. Okay, that's the, in air, they always loop around the sun. So I showed you that little red dot in there. That's the sun. And then we will actual factual. We'll just show you one more time that that's the distance day after, and then there. So basically, it's actually the closest to the sun. Hmm, that day. Okay that day 
and then we get that. Oh, I'm looking at Earth. I apologize, people. I was looking down at... I wasn't paying attention to AU at, at the Sun. So, we'll go to the, the AU at the Sun. And there, and then... So, yeah. There's a very high possibility of this big comet, which basically I do have the uh, size on uh, on it, too. And basically, I, if I'm not mistaken, it's something like about 45 meters or something like that. And if I'm wrong on that, I'll have that refigured for you in a little while. Might even be able to slip that in this video, okay? So that's the closeness of it to the sun. So it's going to be very close to the sun. It'll probably get eight by the sun. But then as much as magnetical as we've seen with the sun throwing things off, that's when it gets into the, uh, the actual factual, where is it going to throw it? So we have to reproject it after it goes by the sun to see what, how close it'll get to Earth. So these are things that NASA and them are not going to tell you. They don't want the common public to know about stuff like this. So then, see, when we get to this point, we are only going to supposed to be in the going through a path of it. So basically, I'm basically telling everybody again, there's really not much to worry about. But just when it goes around the magnetic of the sun, that could change and make us have to do recalculations. So we'll be doing that, and there'll be plenty enough time to watch me and my channel and let you know the actual facts of what's going on. Okay. So, everything changes is like I say, basically, there was a rough estimate also on this conjection here, and then Einstein's rule of trajectory, and basically he helped Mr. Braun, and, and they basically, we can put a missile up anybody's ass anywhere, okay, it's all in proportional integral derivatives, okay, so we'll give you the crosshairs, ladies and gentlemen, of where, we can, of where the object will end up hitting, okay. And the spies that are trying to figure out how I get pictures of the moon, uh, basically what you should do is stay out of my computer and stay off my information, or I basically I'll share it with everybody out there, okay? And you want a fresh shot of the moon, ladies and gentlemen? Here we go. I can steal anybody's satellite down feeds. Anybody can. All it is is radio signals. How did that SOB get that? Remember, it's SOB... Actually, it's son of a buck. It stands for son of a buck. You know, no one ever wants to call me a son of a, you know what. Somebody get mad about somebody. Call my mom a name. I would. And I would take it personally, too. So here you go. There's a nice fresh shot of all the dark objects that are up by in the sky around the moon. And then we'll zoom in and try to see if we can see any objects up there in the sky. It's the rover will give us beautiful shots of the moon. I mean, up at Mars. I'm sorry, I apologize. This is all at Mars, and then as you can see objects in the sky. That's what the sp that's what space looks like from the surface of the moon, ladies and gentlemen, up there. And there's a little bit of colorization going on there. And as you can see, the, I might be able to basically bl blow it to you right here. That the idea of, there's a good possibility that there's somebody that's left uh, how to fly through space before, etched in a rock somewhere in the world. And yes, ladies and gentlemen. So anyway, uh, this could be just false information that I got, and that could be what they're feeding me, but I really think that this is actually, it doesn't really, it's whatever I can intercept, and basically I've intercepted this. And you can see a figure eight and plants, planets or whatever inscribed in the ground and everything like that. So anything, whatever has ever lived on Mars before at one time or other, or whatever planet that I've intercepted this from that they are feeding it, is the, the actual, actual factual that this stuff is out there. Okay? the whole skull and bones of it. It's all out there. So anyway, and when we go up to there, let me put this to paint real fast so you can see that. Now like I say, if this is false information, it's been fed to me. But as you can see, those are planets and stars out there. And then we'll zoom in on this. And no matter if this is fake or not, it doesn't matter. It's good to intercept a, something. So we'll slide over. And everything else will be straight out from Soho and everything like that. But I intercepted this picture. Satellite feeds, it's just radio frequencies. Telephone sig uh, telephone signal from or from Mars, I mean from the moon, yeah. FM signal, back in the day, yep, could have been done, but it wasn't. It was just the future of television. We didn't have it in production yet. We did shortly after, though. So very interesting stuff up there. Check that out there. Hold it, hold the crap. So very interesting formations, whether it's being glimmer down to the face on Mars or not. 
No matter what, very interesting stuff. See, anyhow.